Psalms 140. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Deliver me, O Lord. You're going to find this is a tribulation passage about the Antichrist. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Singular. Now, David is delivering this chief musician. He set up the musicians already. So this is later on. This is when he's setting up the whole temple and, and tabernacle, preparing for Solomon and his son. And he speaks of man singular. I'm going to run that off into the Antichrist. Not the Antichrist for David, but this passage looks to the Antichrist. Preserve, keep up. When you preserve something, you put it up, you keep it for a later date. Preserve me from the violent man. Man, there's an evil and violent man, is that man of sin that Paul talks about in, uh, I think it's either 1st or 2nd Thessalonians. When you read all the prophecies about the Antichrist and everything he does, man, it's an evil and violent man. When he seeks out to destroy one race of people, and anybody who, who tries to help those people, he's going to make Adolf Hitler look like a pussycat. About that evil, wicked, violent man, which imagine mischiefs, plural, in their heart. Their heart, not his heart. You get an evil and a and a and a violent man coming. You got the antichrist. You got the beast and the false prophet. And imagine take off one letter, you got image. Continually are gathered together for war. James speaks about war because you ask not, you receive not. Once there are fightings among you because you envy it. There's one thing that the Antichrist and the devil want. They want all that God has. And all the worship of God. They, plural, so there's an evil man and there's a violent man. Their heart, they. Again, that, that's going to be the Antichrist and the false prophet. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Aristotle says that the serpent's tongue, that the tip of that tongue is as small as a hair. Not only do you have the fangs of certain serpents that are deadly, we're going to see in the next part of this verse, but that tongue is also painful and destructive. That serpent. Now look, we have an evil man, we have a violent man, we have the serpent, verse 3. There's the unholy trinity in Revelation chapter 12 says that old serpent, the devil, is the devil. Is Lucifer, Satan. Adder's poison is under their their lips. Poro. Sila. Again, that Sila points to a, a second advent. When God, Jesus Christ, come to deliver the nation of Israel and the sheep nations from the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the devil. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. I've been telling you, the wicked all throughout the Bible points to one wicked person, the Antichrist. David had many wicked people after him. From a young shepherd boy all the way up to a king on the throne. His military leaders, his son, his family, other people in the kingdom. Preserve. 
Yeah, we already saw that in verse 1. Preserve me from the violent man, verse 1, who has purpose to overthrow my going. So that violent man, he, he, he wants to overthrow David. Wants to overthrow the Jews. The proud, the proud is linked with the evil, the violent, the serpent, and the wicked. Pride never has any good condemnation in the Bible, as far as I know. And if you found a good place of pride, go ahead and put it in the comment. Give me the book, chapter, and verse number. I'd like to see them. I mean, I've, already, I've only read the Bible ten times through a minimum. I've only taught from Genesis to Revelation all the way through, and we're from Genesis to, to Psalms right now on our way to Revelation again. Countless uh, commentaries I've written, counting reports and Bibles I've written and subjects of the Bible. If you found one good place in the Bible where pride and proud and boasting and and it, it speaks truly of, it, it, it's of God and for God and for his people. I like you give me the book, chapter, and verse number. I didn't ask for your opinion. I didn't ask for a scholar's opinion. I'm asking for a book, chapter, and verse. And pretty much, if it's going to be in the scripture, it would probably be at least two or three different Bible references. But I'll take one. The proud have hid a snare, a trap for me. And cords, ropes. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins. The only other place that is in Psalms 141 verse 9. That's not gin as the drink. That's traps. There's all kinds of traps. And pitfalls set by the evil man, the violent man, the, the serpent, the wicked, to entrap and to snare David and the children of Israel in the tribulation period. One of those traps of snares, I, I don't know what would be the classification, is that the three and a half years when the, when the Antichrist reveals himself sitting in the Holy of Holies, saying, here I am, God, And you've got the law. And those Jews are going to be so profound to be in the law, following the law. They've got to go to Jerusalem three times a year, but there's going to be a period. You can't go to Jerusalem. There's the Antichrist. And God's going to prepare for them uh, as, an e as wings of an eagle to, to put Israel into a place prepared for them. And Satan is going to chase after him. He's going to swallow up the river of Jordan and try to drown him. Then you have Selah again. A second Advent passage. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Well, you're dealing with, a, with the one who proclaims to be a God. The Antichrist. Hear the voice of my supplication, O Lord. I'm in trouble, God. Why don't you listen? And weak, clean Christians who have not lived any kind of life. But, well, you know, how dare you mock God? How you dare say God don't answer your prayer? <coughs> you, ne been in, you have never been in serious troubles and serious problems. You've never been to God in prayer and, and say, God, I need an answer, and there's been silence. God, when are you going to answer? Silence. I have. Oh, God, the Lord. Look at the Lord, verse 6. Oh, Lord, verse 6. Oh, God, the Lord. It's getting serious. Not just the Lord. Oh God, the Lord. The strength of my salvation. He's my God. He's my salvation, David. Thou hast covered my head 
in the day of battle. O Lord, O God the Lord, the strength of my salvation, thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Ephesians chapter 6. Scripture with scripture. Ephesians chapter 6. Head, salvation. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 17. Ephesians 6, 17. Take the helmet of salvation. Where does the head go? Where does the helmet go? Helmet goes on the head. David says, on my head, salvation. Paul says that the helmet for the Christian is salvation. Grant now. O oh Lord, the desires of the wicked. What's the desires of the wicked? To, to get rid of, to eliminate David totally. And all his seed. What is the desires of the Antichrist? To eliminate all the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob completely. Let the mischief of their own lips cover them. The Antichrist, and we already seen with Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler had a big mouth. And yet you cannot find anywhere, and nothing's been found yet, where Adolf Hitler shot a bullet, pulled a sword, tied a noose, Pull the gas chamber switch or however they turned it on. And yet he's charged with all the murders of the Jews and other people. And he done it out of his big fat mouth. The Antichrist is going to do the same thing. Further not his wicked device. But what would be a wicked device singular? How about the mark of the beast that will tattle on people that don't have the mark of the beast? I mean, you got people today, this, this is August 2020, the recording. You got people who call the police because you don't or, or not wearing a mask. You get people who get upset with you because you're not wearing a mask in public. What if the Antichrist ups the ante and puts a cash value upon the heads of the Jews? That if you bring me a, a, a Jew, I will give you money, I'll give you food, I'll give you whatever your desires were. According to what the devil tried to offer Jesus Christ in the Mount, uh, I mean, uh, when he was tempted. Like what the devil offers all men, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the, and the lust of the eye. The tribulation period, and then with the wrath of God, and the wrath of the Antichrist upon the Jewish people. And the wrath of the Antichrist upon God himself. And then the Bible speaks of the great tribulation period. The last three and a half years. That Jesus himself said. Except time be shortened. And it will be shortened. Even the very elect. Wouldn't survive. Man, now's the time to get saved. Because you realize the rapture could happen any moment, and I don't know how long the tribulation begins after the rapture, but it will happen after the rapture. And once the rapture's finished, 
Don't think you're going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're going to have to go to that temple in the three and a half years into that temple worship. The Antichrist is going to open up that veil. Ta-da! Jesus said for the Jew, pray that your flight be not on the Sabbath. We're not honoring the Sabbath today. A wicked device against David's people, the Jews. Least they exalt themselves, Sila. As for the head of those that compass and circle me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let them sink by their own words. Let burning coals fall upon them. Burning. Jesus said, if you help your enemies, you, you heap on burning coals. But David's not like helping and just burn their heads. Let them be cast into fire. That's hell. That's destruction. What happened to what happened to love thy enemies, David? David's not under that covenant. Come on, if David was looking forward to Calvary, uh, Jesus taught, and Je Jesus taught when he was alive, he passed on to the disciples after his, his ascension in heaven, and John wrote to us, love the brethren. David says, take your enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. David says, go get them. Cast into a fire. You know where the Antichrist and the false prophet go? They go into the lake of fire. During the millennium. The devil's chained for a thousand years. Then he's cast into the lake of fire. Into deep pits. Graves, hell. That they rise not again. Total destruction. Let not the evil speaker... Be established in the earth, or orator. Someone who's got a good mouth. Using for the devil. Evil shall hunt the violent man. There's a violent man again. To overthrow him. The evil man, verse 1, then the violent man. The evil man is going to outdo the violent man. And the book of Revelation speaks about mystery Babylon. She's going to be destroyed by her own people. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. Satan, the, the false prophet, the Antichrist, are going to deceive and they're going to get their own selves. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted, Israel, Jacob's trouble, and the right of the poor. If you're poor in the millennium, you have, I mean, in the tribulation period, you have not received that mark. James, who's written to tribulation Jewish people, has a condemnation against those that are rich, because the only rich people are going to be in the tribulation period are those that receive the mark. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. And Revelation 19 talks about the one that comes that has a name that no man knows. That's written upon his thigh. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. There is the millennium. Who the upright? The nation of Israel and the sheep nations that help Israel in the tribulation period. After the after the evil one and the wicked one had been put down. 